hello everyone and welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. We are literally picking up exactly where we left off last time in what can uh, what I can only really really sort of um categorize as a surreal clusterfuck of just like what the hell is going on? Uh yeah, I I don't know. Um I've been reflecting on it. I've been reflecting on it and thinking about what the hell we've just gone through. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, with Moby Dick, but I mean, it's it's weird that, like, you know, I, I know of the Ahab and Ishmael sort of situation, but the fact that the right at the end there, there's a literal whale that comes out uh, in flames. I, I don't know what to tell you. I guess we, I have to go read Moby Dick, guys, to understand... <laughs> to go and understand what's going on with this goddamn game. Um, which is, yeah, because, you know, old Captain Ahab, and then Ishmael, and uh, not a white whale, but a flaming whale. It's a, it's a weird little reference there. Uh, I don't even know what to say. Like, that episode was... Uh, that first introduction to the Phantom Pain was just absolutely mind-blowing. I don't know what the hell is going on. And we know that the last episode ended with us getting picked up by Ocelot on a horse. And he's like, what's up? I've got a new voice. Deal with it. Let's move on. Here we go. And then we, uh, we shot a literal flaming Pegasus um, for a little while until we are now uh, at this point I've literally just pressed continue and and paused so we are now going to proceed uh, with episode two uh, where maybe we will get some answers or clarity on the fact that hey guys don't worry that whole introduction it was all a dream just like I'm ho just like I'm hoping because that's fucking crazy if it's not a dream <laughs> and uh, we will just see. We just have to see how we go. So let's let's resume and uh, continue the wild ride. Right back into it, dude. Come on. Oh. It was there, and then it wasn't there. Alright, there's the revolver. The name's Ocelot. Ah. Big boss. You know who I am. A certain man gave me a job to do. Two, actually. First was to get you out of that hospital. Second was to rescue the man himself. You remember? Your partner, nine years ago, Kazuhira Miller. Nine years back, your private army came under attack by Cypher. You were considered dead. Until today, that is, when Cypher found you. And it's not just them. The whole world wants you dead. Cypher. You'll join up with Miller. Build that private army of yours one more time. It's your only chance. Is this Troy Baker? First, we need to save Miller. It is. He's in Afghanistan. Yeah. Afghanistan. <laughs> oh my God, he finally said something. And it is Kiefer Miller. Kiefer Miller? Kiefer Sutherland. Four years ago, the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. The Muslims are fighting back with Western support. 
Miller was training Mujahideen rebels when he was captured by the Soviets. The Red's 40th Army. Troop strength somewhere around 100,000. The squad holding Miller set off near the Pakistan border yesterday. Now in three days, they'll reach the Soviet garrison. They'll be interrogated for a few more days, and it's off to a logger or left to rot in a ditch on Afghan soil. I give him two weeks. The job didn't mean anything to Miller. He only took it on to keep you safe. Well, there's our ride. It's a whaling ship. Had a pretty good deal on her once the IWC started raising a stink. Now it's seven days to Port Kasim, another three over land. So we won't have much time once we're there. Don't take too long getting used to your new self. Hang on. This music, dude, incredible. Wow. Um. And we get on a whaling ship as well. <laughs> what the hell? So Miller's fine. Miller's just off and doing stuff. And we gotta go rescue that boy. So Keith Sutherland is voicing our guy, confirmed by him saying, Afghanistan. <laughs> and that was it. So going to Afghanistan. Chapter one, revenge. Gave him his patch back. Get on that eye patch, dude. Now he looks like the man I remember. Except with a fucking literal pizza metal poking out of him. Jesus. Diamond Dogs. That was the logo on his jacket. Interesting. Ocelot's Briefing. The Man on Fire. Music Tape 2. Bro, I cannot wait to listen to The Man on Fire. See what the fuck that is about. Okay, so let's just let's just catch up on that. Troy Baker is the new voice of Ocelot. Um, I wouldn't have minded Josh Keaton reprising his role. Changing voice actors, man. It's, it's, uh, it's killing me. It's killing me. The only voice actor change that I think would have made more sense um, from the beginning is if they changed the voice actor for Huey. Um, he is so similar to Otacon, it's driving me crazy. Even though he's apparently supposed to be like quite different. I'm excited to explore that more this game and see what happens there. Um, but if they replaced Christopher Randolph and gave Huey a different voice actor, I think that would have definitely helped. Uh, differentiate more. Um, I, get, I know that it's like 20 years later, but Josh Keaton could have still been Ocelot, man. It just makes me think that's like there was only like a select few people that they wanted to continue bringing back. I wonder how Chris Randolph felt about um, not being able to bounce off of the, uh, the original, you know, bounce off of David Hayter. Uh, it would be interesting to look up his thoughts as well. Um, so Ocelot was given a mission by Miller, so Miller and Ocelot know each other, to rescue Big Boss, aka Ahab, <laughs> to get on a whaling ship, 
um, Metal Gear Solid Five, Moby Dick, everyone, um, and then yeah, we're gonna go rescue Miller in Afghanistan. So he was obviously fine. He's been he's been, just been doing shit this whole time. So he made it out of the of the helicopter explosion quite easily. Then who else was in that helicopter? Chico, who is probably most definitely dead. Paz, who is definitely dead. And then there was another dude. Well, I mean, there would have been the pilot, and then there was like the medic dude who cut out the, pulled the bomb out. Um, so I don't know. They made it so everyone died. Big boss in a coma. Miller, um, doing some sort of doing some shit over here in Afghanistan. So I cannot wait to see what's going on. So let's let's proceed. So we got some rewards. We're gonna definitely listen to these tapes and see what's going on. And it looks like we got a new logo as well. Uh, it's no longer MSF. Diamond Dogs instead. Not as cool as MSF. MSF sounds so much cooler, but that's fine. Episode 1, Phantom Limbs. He had a cool robot arm now. Similar to, um, to z z the doorknob. The doorknob. under total Soviet control. Miller's been captive for 10 days. Not much time left. Weather will clear shortly. Storm's passing. He's got his own iDroid. I think I will get used to the new Ocelot voice. Like, it's fine. It's actually probably closer to the older Starring Punished Venom Snake. Benedict Kazuhira Miller. Oh. Revolver Shalashaska Ocelot. Learning how to use that arm. Getting used to it. And it's red now. The Skull's Parasite Unit. Big Boss in Metal Gear Solid 4 was wearing gloves. Nine years on ice. Solo infiltration of the Soviet main ground forces. JF Ray Eyewear Ocelot Gear. Warm. Yeah, give me my eye droid back. Dude. Holy shit. Miller is being held in Darwin Dehar to the north. Check its location now. Take out your iDroid. Um I'm wondering if this is like for the sake of storytelling and what they wanted to do. Boss, take a look at your iDroid. For what they wanted to do in this game. If um cuz Boss has scars all over and he's got like shit poking out of his head and I'm like Big Boss in the Metal Gear Solid 4 epilogue looked pretty clean. I mean, you could probably explain away, like, oh yeah, you know, it's the future. A lot a lot of time has passed. He's probably had some work done to, to clean up the, the damage to his face. <laughs> um, but that's that's very um that's very interesting because he's like scarred, which is appropriate considering uh, the event that we were in. But I feel like I'm pretty sure he must have been he must have been wearing gloves in Metal Gear Solid 4. I remember him wearing like gloves with like the trench coat and everything like that. So he could have a robot hand under that glove. Probably doesn't need to keep it warm, but for aesthetic at least, he'll uh, <laughs> wear a glove over the the robot hand. Luke Skywalker's done it. We've all we all wear the the glove over the robot hand. It's, it's fine. Um, I'm just pausing it because I don't want to miss dialogue, but like, 
I have to adjust to these two characters that I love so much <laughs> with with different voices. Um, Kiefer Sutherland's voice has already grew on me in Ground Zeroes. Like it's it's a very good voice, and it actually does suit Big Boss. It's just the jarring adjustment to be like, oh, I'm so used to hearing a different voice. Um, so you kind of have to get yeah, definitely get used to that one. And now I have to do it again um, with Ocelot. So it basically skipped over that whole thing where it's like we get rescued and it's like cool we're in afghanistan now let's get miller so it's just like jumping from from place to place so i can see what people have been saying where it's like there's maybe less of cutscene exposition story stuff and it's more like situational environmental storytelling uh where i have you make your own stuff while you're while you're doing it which uh which makes sense because i if that was metal gear solid 4 there would have been a full-on cutscene exposition sequence to catch big boss up on the way here i would have loved that um obviously i'm not i'm not complaining uh that there it isn't there i'm just saying like i personally really love metal gear solid 4 so i don't have any gripes with like it being very cutscene heavy because i really love the story so i love being able to absorb that stuff um in a situation where i can like listen instead of having to play the game at the same time and then split my attention between absorbing story and focusing on the game itself um so we will we'll see how the story is told to us um in this i think it's done a great job so far especially in the in the in the opening i i really liked um the time it took to introduce everything while also leaving me completely stunned um <clears throat> let's get into it let's do it so take out the iDroid. you see wandy on the map that's where they're keeping Miller. Only problem is, we don't know his exact location. Finding it is your first priority. Wow. Dude, we got like m multiple places that we can... Whoa. We got like multiple places go that we can go to. Oh, there he is. There's Miller. I can't play cassette tapes yet. But we're going to. Uh, we got GMP. The target is Kazuhira Miller. Partner. He was captured by the Soviets and is being held in one day. He's gonna look a lot worse than that photo, but I'm sure you'll know him when you see him. Intel radio call Mother Base. Fox, put the iDroid away from him. I don't want to listen to you. <laughs> You're not my ocelot. Got your binoculars? Or should I say your int scope? Int scope. See the village? Straight ahead. A little to the left. To the right. A little to the left. Look up. Look up. <laughs> All right. That's the village. If you see something through the binoculars and you need more information, just give me a call. I'll tell you anything I can about it. Ah, uh, he's going to be my codec guy. That's Vialo Village. The Vialo Calais. The villagers fled the war and evacuated a while back. Since then, it's become a base for the Soviet's 40th Army. A few days ago, Miller was taken through there, en route towards Dewan Dehar. You may be able to pick up the trail there. It's worth a shot. Put a marker on it so you don't lose track of where it is. Marker Good. Placed. Now you won't have to worry about getting lost along the way. You can't have much left in him. I give him three days, Tops. If we fail, and he dies, we lose our chance of revenge. But we need more intel. If you just go charging into Doan Dehar, you'll be putting both your lives at risk. See what you can find out first. The Soviets have other outposts, not just the one you saw. Afghanistan is a big place. I expect you'll become quite familiar with those binoculars as you plan your next move. How and where you make it, well, that's up to you. From here on out, you're on your own. You're a legend in the eyes of those who live on the battlefield. That's why you have to handle this mission yourself. Put those nine years behind you and return as big boss. That's how Koss would want it. I'll be sending additional intel by radio. Stay sharp. Not one of Miller's bodyguards survived. And they were good. 
All we found on the scene were their corpses and these. He'll be missing them. Mm. And you're his only hope of getting them back. <laughs> Cars gear. JF Ray Eyewear. They got that sponsorship. They got a brand deal. Now go! Let the legend come back to life. Oh man, he was so close to being able to do one of those, man. <laughs> that would have been that would have been what I want. And remember, you're pretty good. Um, holy fuck! All right, we're into the gameplay, and he has literally disappeared. All right, um, ocelot's gone. We we're, we're just in it, dude. Um, there you go. We got horse controls, uh, which I need to check. Get on, off, reload, hide. Ooh, you can hide while on the horse. It's basically almost the same, except for... Okay, so it's just the stuff that changes. Alright, cool. Um, whip out... Can I whip out the iDroid? There we go. Okay. Missions. We can now play the cassette tapes. I've got 16 of the bad boys. Ocelot's briefing. Alright, there we go. This is the story. This is where the story stuff is. World affairs over the nine years. What happened in the Caribbean? After effects of Snake's coma. The man on fire. And then we've got music as well. Cool. Alright, let me just... Before we get into the tapes, let's just... Oh, dude. Do a little more practice in those ruins. Shooting, taking cover, climbing obstacles. See to it that nine-year gap doesn't slow you down. This is a very big reminder to everybody that this is going to be me taking my time and enjoying the gameplay and soaking it in, like you guys did when you first played this game. Um, you really just want to adjust to everything. Um, no sneaking suit. We're in, uh, you know, we got. I actually really like this outfit. Um, I'm getting a lot of Metal Gear Solid 4 vibes with like the hood where like old snake comes in and he's got like he's like he's got the sneaking suit on but like he's kind of like blending in a little bit um so i love that the red arm's very interesting because it's like i hope he does a v for victory at some point and then it's it's also a rocket arm <laughs> so you can like shoot it off um but this is yeah this is absolutely absolutely crazy I need to get used to controls um, this is this honestly feels fantastic. Um, okay, so we can roll. We're gonna have a XOF patch fly out again. I actually f love this. Can we? Can we do the thing that we could do in Metal Gear Solid Four, where we could lie down on our back? I don't think we can't. Like. Yeah, it does a full roll. I'm trying to see if we could, like, roll onto our back or something, but I don't think we can. Very interesting to see the Diamond Dogs logo. I want to know what that's about. So I guess Miller maybe decided to rebrand MSF while we were gone into something else. Um, we can use the... Oh, we can call our horse. That's great. So we can use the binoculars. It's up to Stay you down. whether to slip by enemies or take them down. Just remember that any situation can change fast. Familiarize yourself with your weapons and items while you can. You need to be able to switch between them quickly to meet any threat. Um. Zoom in. Oh, dude, it's not just on a D-pad anymore. We got a, we got goddamn weapon wheels over here. Phantom Cigar. Cigar blended with a medicinal plant that speeds up the perception of time. Doesn't work if user is under stress, such as when spotted by an enemy. Oh, dude, we can speed up the- we can speed up time? Is there a real passage of time in this game? Bionic Arm. Use the call button to perform a knock. Law enemies. 
Myoelectric prosthesis for Snake. When equipped as a secondary weapon, press the CQC button while sprinting to unleash a devastating punch. Oh my god, it even has a sound effect. Incredible. I can't wait to punch someone with this with this arm. It does stun damage. Okay. That is incredible. Um This the quick dive's good. Left and right. We can dive backwards if need be. Awesome. Can't believe I didn't even pick up that there was a dash the whole time in ground zeros. I just didn't use it. But now we can now we can take full use of it. Um Okay, I'm going to sit down and we're going to go through these tapes because I need to know what the fuck is going on in this game. Um, so we're going to go through Ocelot's briefing. Um, I'm, I guess that it is highlighting maybe what is most important in uh, the yellow and then other stuff uh, in white. Um, let's, take, let's take a listen because... We're absorbing everything that there is, guys. We are we are going hard. If you have survived and come along with me through this through my entire Metal Gear Solid experience, you know that at least in the most recent titles, we are very extensive now. Uh, Peace Walker, we did. Peace Walker is probably the game where I have listened and taken in the most information purely because of the briefing files. It takes the codec and puts it in a list for you to go through instead of needing to be in the right place at the right time for certain codec calls. Um, I still prefer the codec, and I like that it... Uh, I would prefer, like, a blend of having forced codec-related cutscenes with story stuff, plus a live commentated um, codec over briefing files, potentially. Like, there's there's got to be a healthy blend in there, you know? Like, have the important story stuff be in mandatory codec calls or something like that. I don't know. It's really hard when you're in a series like Metal Gear Solid and there's so much goddamn exposition. But you guys should know me by now that I am trying to be as thorough as possible because I'm absolutely goddamn in love with this series. Um, I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's start with British Sovereign Base Area. You were hospitalized in Dekelia, a British Sovereign Base Area on Cyprus. It's part of British overseas territory that falls outside of Cypriot jurisdiction. You got moved from Cuba's little America right into Cyprus's little Britain. Why to kill you? The UK and the US remain close allies. The last place Cypher would think to look for you is inside their own system. That's what kept you safe in British military hospital for nine years. The safest place from a whale is inside its own belly. You were a regular Geppetto. Well, it wasn't for huh. who led me out to safety. So who was that guy? Cypher went so far as to attack British territory, burning their own ally. That's how badly they wanted you dead. He said I was in a British... Wait, wait, wait. You were hospitalized in... Wait, wait, wait. A British sovereign base there. Wait. <laughs> um, it just goes right into the next one, so there you go, when you, when you pick it. Um, I know that we can listen to briefing files on the go. Um... But I am not going to pay attention to what is being said uh, if I do that. So until I find like maybe like a happy medium where I can listen to stuff while we're kind of just running around. Um, at the moment, I'd like to just kind of absorb this information. Um, now it's a Pinocchio reference, like Monstro, <laughs> and we're we're Geppetto, but Pinocchio didn't break us out. We're like, who was that guy? voiced by Keith Sutherland, and Ocelot didn't even answer the question. I genuinely think that maybe it was like, it's weird, but maybe it was like, oh, we're doing like a, an opening to the game, and maybe they just wanted to like, you know, they're like, Keith, can you just voice this other guy? And it, and it I don't know, it's, it's a little bit weird, um... But I'm going to just try and pass it off as I think maybe it was just like the tutorial character guy. Plus, let's think about the fact that the boss just woke up in a in a nine year from a nine year coma. Like maybe dude's a bit delirious. Maybe you know that's maybe it le lends room for like all of this weird fucking shit to go on. The the, the thing there when Ocelot picked up the boss before. Um. Dude, Flaming Pegasus Man was there, but then disappeared right after that. Um, and so did the Psychomantis Kid. So I'm like, 
are they even there? Was that just like, was that real? Uh, who were we shooting at when we were escaping with Ocelot? If so, like a random dude on a horse and uh, the big boss is just goddamn hallucinating this this stuff. It's, it's racking my brain because it's so surreal, more surreal than we've uh, seen before. Like we've had some surreal stuff in Metal Gear, but not like that fucking shit. <laughs> Let's get on to Cyprus, a nation divided. He said I was in a British military hospital. But the doctor had a Greek accent. They hire locally. Easier to trust them. De Kelly is also home to Greek Cypriots, after all. What about the Turks? They haven't returned to the south. Not yet. The Cyprus dispute is still a long way from resolved. The country is just as split as it was in 74. Turkish Cypriots in the north, Greek Cypriots in the south. Between them, the Green Line, the UN established. And Achelius sits right on top of it. It does. Part of the buffer zone between the two groups. Another reason it was the perfect place to hide you. Easy to spot any outsiders snooping around. So how do things stand? Now, last year, the Turks declared that the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is an independent state. Though it's only Turkey that recognizes it. In the past, the Greeks and Turks lived side by side in the same villages. There are reasons to fight. Those came from the outside. Greece, Turkey, Britain, America, they all had their own stake in pitting the two sides against each other. But once you spark something like this, it's impossible to control. Both sides build up grudges like debt, without the foresight to see that each act of revenge just fans the flames, and then it's too late for other nations to rush in with peace talks. The embers keep on smoldering. Each nation's arrogance only breeds anarchy. The world is paralyzed by this hunger for revenge. Cyprus is no different. Um, so, Big Boss has barely spoken um, in the game itself, which I, I find very interesting. I wonder how much we're going to get out of him, because like that scene was just Ocelot just talking at him, um, which is kind of weird, because Big Boss is actually quite talkative. Um, so it's, it's very funny that they were like, we replaced the voice actor uh, to capture the dramatic and the motion capture and the voice experience and then big boss says like afghanistan <laughs> so i'm i'm curious um to see to see why um especially when it's like he's talking he's talking way less he's talking more in the briefing files with a bit of a back and forth so it's because i i want to get used to the voice so i need to hear it more so um actually hearing it in a briefing file um is decent it shows that he's actually talking and engaging with the situation instead of just being spoken at like an almost silent protagonist you know you're up we're changing ships but we can't go sailing the suez in a whaler the suez canal when did they reopen it? Not long after you were attacked. Once they finished sweeping it for mines after the Arab-Israeli conflict. Can you stand? <sighs> we're gonna transfer to a container ship for passage through the Suez. Our destination is Pakistan, Afghanistan's neighbor to the south. There we disembark and head via Peshawar to the Zero Line, the border. We'll travel to the Khyber Pass by road. And then? We continue on horseback. Afghanistan's main roads are under Soviet control. We'll need to go around them. It'll be all narrow, winding paths through the mountains. We'll do better on horseback. It's a local guerrilla tactic. They use the higher ridges to avoid air recons. Then they charge down the mountains for ambushes. The Soviets still haven't devised a counter strategy. Our time frame is only half as much as we really need. It's gonna be a tough march. Better horses than boats. Well, it'll make for good physiotherapy. Take the time to get used to that new arm. Um. Hmm. Very funny that the the Suez Canal comes up in this. We're like, ah, oh, we got to go through on a cargo ship, and then uh, Kojima, you predicted the Suez Canal getting blocked in 2021 <laughs> by a cargo ship, you madman. The Soviets have indicated they are not participating in the Los Angeles Olympics primarily because 
the United States has made no attempt to guarantee the safety of the Soviet Union's athletes. The United States is increasingly demonstrating the belief that the issue has nothing to do with its preparations, and in fact this is retaliation for the Western nation's boycott of the previous Moscow Olympics. That concludes today's news. That's quite some news. The uh, Soviet Union not attending the LA Olympics? Yeah. Andropov's death has changed some things. They're calling it revenge for the Western boycott of the Moscow Olympics. Countries boycotted the Moscow Olympics? Yes. In protest of the Soviet Union's invasion of Afghanistan, over 50 countries were absent. It's too bad I didn't get to see Yamashita's judo. When the 40th Army crossed the Amu River four years ago, detente went right out the window. The U.S. Congress chose not to ratify SALT II, and Reagan's hardline politics won in the presidency in a landslide. According to him, the Soviet Union's an evil empire. The Second Cold War. And there's been no end to regional conflicts and civil wars. Lebanon, the Falklands, Grenada, Iran, Iraq. The story never changes. Egypt and Israel did sign a peace treaty. But then the driving force on the Egyptian side, President Sadat, was assassinated afterward. Apparently, his actions were considered a betrayal of his fellow Arabs. Islamic extremists? Yes. Fundamentalist extremists have been responsible for some bold acts of terrorism in recent years. We've had extremist students in Iran take U.S. Embassy workers hostage in suicide bombings in Lebanon. Over 300 foreign soldiers stationed there have been killed. But countries have yet to develop an effective means of dealing with terrorism. Afraid of losing their own men, they've pulled their forces out, handing private forces a golden opportunity. Private forces? Small armies with no national affiliation, working for the highest bidder. That's right, they got the idea from you. After Mother Base went down, they began spreading to meet the soaring demand. Miller's organization is just one of many PFs now. Mm. The entire world is after you. But at the same time, it needs you too. I think it's such a shame that Ocelot wasn't in Peace Walker. I think his presence would have really been appreciated. I think it would have been awesome to have him in there in some capacity to show something. Because he, obviously, he's been caught up on events. Like, he's aware of Cypher and everything that's going on. He was, like, Ocelot is, Ocelot is so important to Metal Gear um, in every game that he is in. He's in every single main, he is, he's in every single main game um and i just think that it's it is a severe missed opportunity to not have him in peace walker because peace walker is also just so important as on its own like there's so much that goes on there uh for big boss's growth and change as a character big boss in metal gear solid 3 that was like i can't see why the boss would abandon her country and like having that mentality to going into like peace walker and now when he's like literally broken away from his own country forming his own army like betraying his homeland it's 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 wild to see the journey of of big boss when we were like man this was the the hero and funny dude um that we loved in Metal Gear Solid 3 and we're watching his dark journey into into some villainous character with his with his motives but he thinks it's all in the boss's vision almost like he he believes that and it's not till Metal Gear Solid 3 sorry it's not until Metal Gear Solid 4 in the graveyard with Solid Snake that he realizes that Solid was the one to actually you know continue the like meet the boss's will without even knowing her sort of thing which is which is crazy um so i i really do think ocelot would have been would have been um appreciated to appear in in peace walker i would have loved to have seen that miller told me about what happened in the caribbean nine years ago you do remember miller you'd formed a private army with him an army with no allegiance to a nation i remember but i see you're not sure what's fact and what's a fantasy caused by the coma it's still all a mess, huh? All I can do is tell you the facts as they were told to me. I've gone easy on you up until now, but this is where the hard stuff begins. 1974, the year before you entered your coma. You were in Colombia, operating with a small unit of men, basically mercenaries. Miller was among them. Miller was trying to find a way to turn his and your talents into a line of work. 
He was looking to start a business where you would fight on behalf of others around the world, those who needed military force. But the reality was, at that time, you didn't have enough gear to equip your own men. Then Miller came across this client. It was a huge job he was offering, but you had a shot at pulling it off. You accepted it and headed into Costa Rica. The client even threw in an offshore facility in the Caribbean. The mother base. That would be your new base of operations. Miller sure did have a head for business. As your mission went on, your unit grew and grew. More weapons, more money. Before you knew it, you were commanding 300 men. As the organization got bigger, your military power swelled to match. It got so the international community couldn't afford to ignore you. You were just too damn successful for your own good. Peace Walker, as well, is so important to this game. To Ground Zeroes, especially, and this game. Like, because everything that happens in there is so relevant to what's going on now. Like, anyone who skipped over Peace Walker... Or well, people that just started with this game, because that exists. People just got into Metal Gear Solid with this game. I'd be like, I'm, I'm, I'm so lost. You'd basically be playing, pretty much for the gameplay. I think at this point, if you if you just got in to the series at this point and started here, you know, you just go, all right, cool. What's this? What's this cool stealth game about? I don't know who anyone is. <laughs> you know, I'm very happy that I started from the beginning and worked my way through it to really feel what is happening here. And, and that's kind of like why I'm doing this with you guys, because I don't just want to sit down and just experience gameplay only, the story that's given to me at face value, because um, I understand what this game is now. I understand what this series is over time. And I really just love being able to like share the passion for this series with you guys, instead of just smashing it out without a care and then being like oh why is this this way you know i understand things um and i hope you guys appreciate the extent that i go to um to to be informed about everything that's going on because it's it's truly worth it i think um at the end of the day to have all of the additional information that you can just completely miss um and it really helps you to understand the characters too and then understand why we're even here in afghanistan like what are we even doing what is the purpose um anyway i'm i'm just i'm rambling but i really fucking love being able to do this with you guys is what i'm is what i'm getting at here um to share that passion for metal gear solid together it's a good feeling Everyone was out for you. East, West, First World, Third. It was only a matter of time before someone took you down. And that was XOF. Officially, they're an anti-terror unit under the CIA. In reality, they're Cypher's private strike force. Oh. They lured you to Cuba using Chico, the Nicaraguan revolutionary kid, and Paz, a mole who worked for Cypher as bait. While you were gone, XOF, posing as a nuclear inspection team, stormed Mother Base. At the same time, C4 they placed on the strut legs went off. The whole thing went down in minutes. Wow. XOF. Kisses and hugs followed by a big... <laughs> True. All because of Miller's blind spot. A back door into Mother Base no one suspected. You remember a certain scientist... Huey was responsible for bringing the inspection team on board, giving the enemy a perfect opportunity to hit you at home. You were returning from Cuba when it happened. Mother Base came damn close to taking you with it into the Caribbean. Those of your men out on assignment returned right away. They refused to believe the wreckage in the water they found was Mother Base. But they checked the coordinates again and again until reality finally settled in. You were supposed to die that day. That was XOF's primary objective. As far as most folks know, you did. The first doctor to see you wasn't even sure what he was looking at. Before they'd even finished operating, your men moved you to that hospital in Cyprus. There was a woman named Eva who arranged that. Rings a bell, hmm? Most men in your condition would have been written off right from the start. But you survived. You went straight down to hell, and they pulled you out. Your eye wide open. 
full of venom. The days of Naked Snake are long gone. Welcome back, Venom Snake. This world still needs you. Venom Snake. So that's the thing. It's punished Venom Snake in the in the credits. So we got a new code name, which is uh, that's very interesting. No longer Naked Snake. We haven't been Naked Snake for a while, anyway. Um, but there you go, Big Boss, aka Punished Venom Snake. Um, that's wild. So, okay, Eva. I wonder if we'll see Eva in this game. Then Eva might pop up. But didn't didn't Eva say Eva ran into Snake after a long period of not seeing each other in Hanoi or something like that from Metal Gear Solid Four? I think when they reconnected. Eva has already had Liquid and Solid as well. That's ah, oh, that's crazy to think about because Eva is basically their like the surrogate mother. They in this game, not in this game, but in this timeline, there is a little Solid and Liquid Snake running around somewhere, um, birthed by Eva, created by Cipher. That thing, that story thread fascinates me so much, and I really hope that we see something. I really hope that we see something about it. Here, Snake, try this on. A prosthetic arm. Yeah, Miller was calling it the arm that wasn't there. The physiotherapy's going well. Your arm's bulked up enough for it to fit. There. Perfect. A little time with it, and it'll work better than the real thing. What do you think? Huh. I can still feel my real arm. Well, you better get used to this one quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every now and then. Where? My fingertips. My left fingertips. Uh, sounds like phantom pain. Your brain still remembers your old hand. Yeah. What about your vision? Can you see okay? Yeah. At the moment. Now, the shrapnel in your skull is pressing on your optic nerve. I'm told any hard impact could have an effect on your visual cortex. Yeah. The doctor mentioned that. Your brain might process visual information incorrectly. In other words, you could have hallucinations. You might see things that aren't there, or not see things as they really are. You experience any of that? I think so. When? Right after I wake up. Colors look faded. Colors, huh? Well, that's not a major concern in and of itself, but it could mean the difference between life and death in the field. You'll need to watch out for that. I will. All right. You should continue your physio. We'll be arriving soon. It's the last chance you'll get. Okay. So, because with this shit is right on our optic nerve, we are potentially able to see hallucinations. I don't know how the hell you can explain those hallucinations with Big Fiery Dude, but holy shit. I'm sure there's gonna be something. Um, but then also, like, his co the colors faded. Like, when we see that, saw that the blood was blue, like... That kind of thing. But, my god. That's, that's why. So it's not necessarily a, a nightmare, but it's our optic nerve playing tricks on us. But then we have a tape that's literally the man on fire's weakness. So what is this? Snake, I wanted to ask you about the man on fire. What do you remember from the hospital? Anything we can use? Well, he took off the moment the sprinklers started up. Sprinklers? The fire system? And when he got sprayed with water from the burst pipe, it slowed him down. When we escaped on horseback, he wouldn't cross the river either. And then it started to rain. And he disappeared. Water against fire. Is it that simple? I mean, it makes sense. It's just hard to believe it would work on a guy like that. Okay, the man on fire is real. What even is real? So the hallucinations isn't the man on fire. The most logical thing to be a hallucination, but it's just like, oh yeah, I see colors different sometimes. Okay, sure. Um, there we go. <laughs> what the hell? Boss, your mission is to rescue the target Kazuhira Miller, the man you called your partner nine years ago. Miller was training guerrilla rebels near the Pakistani border when he was captured by the Soviets. He's currently being held at Dawan Dehar. Rescue Miller from the Soviet troops and extract him by chopper. It's time to prove to the world you're the real big boss. Um... 
Is it a good thing that we've literally just sat here listening to tapes until night time? Because now we can, uh, <laughs> now we can be stealthy in the dead of night instead. The target is Kazuhira Miller, your old partner. Oh, okay, hang on. By the Soviets and is being. The target is Kaz. The target is Kazuhira Miller. Stop. Your old Stop. Partner. Stop. He's captured by the Soviets and is being held at one day. He's gonna look a lot worse than okay. that photo, but I'm sure yeah. you'll know him when you see him. I pressed Intel Radio and the briefing tape at the same time. <laughs> should we should we let the passage of time uh, go <laughs> so we can play this in the daytime as intended? We can pass the time. Hang on. Let's let's get off the let's get off the horse. All right, R three to use. Okay. Sun will rise momentarily. Wild. All right, we're back in the daytime. So I had six of them that uses a whole one, and it goes like twelve hours into the future. Great. There we go. I want to play as the game intends, which was in the daytime, because that's why I put us there. <laughs> Um, this is absolutely incredible. Isn't that how I can accelerate? Hang on. Um. Horse, attack. Speed up with the square button. There we go. I think it's the vehicles which is the right trigger to accelerate. All right, we're finally in it. We're finally playing the game. <laughs> after almost after almost an hour of absorbing information and just being blown away by what the hell is going on, we can ride on the Soviet guard post. There are bound to be guards. Take a look with your binoculars. Put the enemy in the center of your field of view. Hmm. That's marking. Focus on the thread, and it'll be marked automatically. You can mark enemies and vehicles by zooming in with your binoculars or camera. Once they're marked, you'll also see their positions on the map. Security at that guard post is relatively light. Looks like the perfect place for a warm-up. Try to remember the ways you used to deal with enemies. Anytime you need advice, just give me a call. Yeah. Hiding on horseback allows you to stay out of sight even while on the move. It's effective for avoiding enemy guard posts and long-range reconnaissance patrols. And then you can, and then you can, okay, so you can be hiding and then aim straight away. That's awesome. Sight, sound, keep all your enemy senses in mind. When you're near an enemy, stay low and move slowly. A uh, tip that I did get given in my Ground Zeroes playthrough was mark all of the enemies that you can. Ooh. That's a type of medicinal plant. Bring it back to base. It's sure to be useful sometime. Oh my god, we can literally like collect plants in the field. We're playing. We're playing Metal Gear Solid: The Witcher, guys. All right, we're gonna interrogate. We're gonna interrogate this dude. We're gonna enjoy all of the different ways that we can, uh... How do we switch sides again? This way. We're gonna enjoy the different ways that we can, uh... Play this game. Not even gonna question it, buddy. Alright. This is so awesome. No one up there? No. Let's have a chat. Ooh, spit it out. Where are the rest? Whistle. Talk. Uh, I don't um, know English. Angliski. Boss, you don't understand what he said? Uh, I guess that makes sense. 
It looks like that uh, horn stuck in your head has impacted the language center of your brain. If only we had a recruit with a Russian interpreter skill, we could get by with simultaneous interpretation. Oh, that's cool. So they've adjusted the this so you can do multiple things. Twenty-four hours have passed since you began the mission. The more time passes, the more Miller's chances run low. Don't keep him waiting. <laughs> Twenty-four hours have passed. I'm, I know. <laughs> Uh, so we actually can't understand. Oh, that's so awesome. Because this goddamn thing in our brain, we've got to get that out as soon as possible. So if we get, like, someone with a Russian interpreter skill, we can then... We then know what they're going to say. Awesome. It's crazy. It's crazy to see the... Even, like, even just the adjustments that were made from Ground Zeroes to Phantom Pain. Like, the, the slight changes. Get thrown, buddy. Rough diamond. That's a rough diamond. Good find. It'll fetch a high price. Oh, and that's how we get GMP. Okay. Or well, one way we can get GMP anyway. Dude, this is absolutely massive. We have a horse, we've got a goddamn giant map. This is like, see, Ground Zeroes is like, here you are, you can kind of run around this mission area, but this seems much, much larger. Like, we've got, like, multiple locations all the way down here. Is Metal Gear Solid, like, is this like an open world Metal Gear? Is that what we're going for here? Uh, we're just like given like the whole concept of a sandbox, like literally in the sand uh, to play around with. This is absolutely incredible to me. All right, we can't. There's no point intimidating them because we can't understand them. But how do we... What's a, what's a cool way to take this dude out? <laughs> Probably just going to do some CQC. We'll just knock him in. Guard post captured. Ooh. Okay, we've effectively captured the guard post. Can we put him in here? Oh, we can. Uh, Alright, you can go to you can go to sleep. On the floor, I guess, because sure. Common metal. Those materials are already processed. They should come in handy sooner or later. Why not start gathering them? Okay, so there's like it's like medicine, like herbs, I mean, that you can, like medicinal herbs and like diamonds and materials and stuff that you can pick up. What are we going to be able to like sell and like make healing items out of herbs? Like, this is incredible. Um, this is blowing my mind. Um, I'll whistle my horse to come over. Hello. All right. That drum roll when I get on the horse um, is going to get a little obnoxious. Dude. I'm going to get, I'm going to get not lost in the sense where I have no idea where to go, but like lost in the sense of just exploration. Which is incredible. And you guys are going to see all of it. Especially, especially in the first episode Extraction of gameplay. Oh, okay. So the items that we picked up automatically get taken to Mother Base like they used to in Peace Walker, except we actually get, like, updated about it. We need to be on our... We need to be watching for... To see if there's any guards. The enemy outpost, Violo Village. The village is crawling with enemy soldiers. Don't just go waltzing in. Start with some recon. Is there anywhere that overlooks the village? Um... We're basically right outside of it. 
Should we go up on the ridge? This basically overlooks the place, doesn't it? What's that? How about it? Can you see the village from there? You... Look at where the enemies are stationed. Look at their gear. Diamonds, baby. There should be a command post somewhere. See any buildings with tighter security? If there are clues to Miller's whereabouts, I'll bet you can find them in there. Sight, sound, keep all your enemy senses in mind. When you're near an enemy, stay low and nice. slowly. If you stand up and run around, you'll make it easier for them to spot you. Okay, let's do some recon, shall we? Mortar shells travel in a curved trajectory, meaning they hit from up above you. You can use your prosthetic arm to make a knocking sound anywhere and lure the enemy. Oh. You can also select empty magazines to throw from among your support weapons. So we can just make a knocking sound anywhere. Do we have to maybe get a little closer for like some guards to like pop in or something? I mean we can get that dude. Interesting. There should be there should be way more. Maybe I'll need to get uh, another angle. say that I'm seeing a bunch of people. Well, one guard on a mortar platform. A parabolic antenna. There could be intel files of some kind in there. That thing? Press up against obstacles like walls to hide from the enemy and protect yourself from attack. This mm. is taking cover. Whenever the enemy is nearby, your first thought should be to take cover. Okay, we want to we'll put marker placed. a marker there so we can check in there for like intel. There we go, there's another one. Not a civilian in sight. The Soviets have taken complete control of the place. There's obviously more than two soldiers. I'm gonna leave my horse out of it. Extraction arrived at motor base. We had a we had a look, but we'll see we'll see what pops up when we're actually in. Okay. Let's have a play around. I feel like this would be so much more effective under the cover of night when we were initially playing around, but we'll you know. We'll we'll roll with it. We'll roll with it. Turning off the power will at least turn off the surveillance cameras, but there's not much good for like the light or anything. There you are. There's another one. So there's like, you know, there's like singular targets hanging around. Wonder if there's like groups on patrol anywhere. And then you don't know how many people are actually gonna be inside locations like this. 
nice. I like the real life adjustment to like light. Dude, okay. Really liking the freedom here. This is awesome. Alright, let's deal with this guy. Damn, we really we really missing out by not being able to interrogate anyone at the moment. Oh shit. Damn. Okay. I made noise. Tactical takedown. It's good old reflex mode. Which I am enjoying using, because it's literally part of the game, but like, you know, we'll just see how we go with it. Get in, get in the trash. A dumpster. Looks big enough to hide somebody. You could stash a downed enemy in there, or hide in it yourself, just don't stand too close to me afterward. <laughs> I really, I really like... Ooh, opening that door makes a noise, because it like smashed... You gotta be careful about which doors you open when you're sneaking around. Got a ladder we can climb up on the roof. I wonder how good their eyesight is. This is awesome. Alright, let's focus on taking out the dudes. Let's go into this building as well, which is actually technically where we put our first... Our first little uh, marker, the A marker. There's another one. Another mortar placement as well. I wonder if there are any doors that we can't open. This is silenced, so we can we can go lethal, but we can also put some people to sleep. Whoa. Ooh. Just decides to casually open the door. Sticking to cover lets you get a bead on the enemy from a safe position. Know where you're gonna shoot before you stick your head out. It's getting darker, here we go. Cover a night, baby. Sun's down already. It goes without saying that darkness is good for infiltration. But your vision will be affected just the same. Keep your guard up, or who knows when you'll bump into an enemy. Put on those night vision gogs for later. Alright, the enemies are starting to move now. I wonder if that means they change when it comes to nighttime. Hello, rat. Coming with me, buddy. Burn the bodies. Um, I don't know where anyone else is, but there's another dude here. So we're gonna just chuck you over this way. There you go. You're just snapping on the couch. There you go. Perfect. You are napping on duty. Alright, we've got a guard that's roaming, a guard here. We should go for the power, I think. But the longer I go without alerting anybody, the better, I think. So let's try up here. Got music playing on the radio. You have arrived at your destination. Okay, so then it will untick B. Yeah. Check that out. Uh huh. Intel, baby.
This is quite the futuristic device for 1984. I gotta tell you. Especially considering it's called an iDroid. <laughs> I don't mind, it's fine. So you picked up Intel an Intel file. Extraction now we know where Miller is. Interface. I'm marking it on your iDroid. Ah, cool. So that one Intel file properly marks off where he actually is. That's awesome. You have arrived at your destination. Um, how do we remove markers from the map then? Can we kind of... Marker removed. Cool. Okay. We can remove it. Oh no, actually I needed that. Marker, pl marker removed. Marker placed. It's just going to go through the whole alphabet? Cool, you can place markers through the whole alphabet, that's great. Alright. Now that was where we wanted to take out the power, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, something there as well. Nice, we get a cassette tape. By turning off the radio. Ooh, don't mind if I do. I literally can't understand what they're saying. Holy shit. Oh no. They're all talking. I need to get the Russian interpreter skill. Oh. I mean, I'm literally in the light. Hold on. Can I turn on? Oh, it's that. Can we? Can we shoot lights out? Oh shit. I, th I thought it was silenced. Oh fuck, dude. Oh fuck. I guess it's the noise of the, the light smashing, which is kind of the problem here. Got him into alert status. We need to get this pe this power turned off. Right, I'm gonna go a long way around. Oh, hang on. I'm gonna get distracted by diamonds. I'm gonna get distracted by diamonds. Can we go under the bridge? Yes, dude. We got a vehicle on this one as well. When targeting an enemy from a distance, keep the effective range of your weapon in mind. If the weapon's reticle is white, that means you're outside its effective range. If you decide to fire anyway, 
Take into account how gravity will make the bullet drop. Until you get a feel for that, you might want to approach the enemy until the reticle turns red, and then fire. Hands off, baby. Trucks doing a patrol. Now we can proceed, I'm pretty sure, here because we like full on. We've got his location now, right? That's the building, boss. That's where they're holding Miller. Okay, so we can now. Oh, that. Ch he's out. Alright. Okay. There's like six other, like five other pieces of intel that we can gather. Like this is really huge. Like, and it makes me want to like explore literally everything. But I will literally the, the mission has already taken over 24 hours. I literally feel like I will just never stop. The, the gameplay is absolutely incredible. It's so much fun. Um, it's like, should we should we just wipe out the whole base, or should I, you know, let them let them go on with their lives? I don't know. Thank you. Imagine if it was like horses too far away. I'd be like, no. That's not how this works. This area is so fucking huge that it makes me want to cover every little piece of ground. Dude. If you don't want the enemy to spot you, stay as low as possible. Sticking to walls is also a good idea. Is this a good route to take? It is. Okay, so... I can now go through here. There's probably a guard post there. I love that, that that truck will stay on our map like fucking forever now. That's great. That's another guard post. Alright. Let's move. Extraction arrived at Mother Base. So when you turn off radios, you get cassette tapes, so I think that's like the music that they're playing. It's an enemy guard post. Watch yourself. I uh, just need to double check how I can... So, for the horse, we can speed up. Can we break at all? Because <laughs> I was like, how the hell do I stop this horse? Because it's just... I've I stopped speeding up ages ago, but it just keeps going. Alright, got a guard post here. We've got a music tape that we're gonna get. Um like the only reason I'm not doing much with the soldiers at the moment is because all we can really do is kind of take them out. Like I can't interrogate them, I can't extract them at this point. So I'm just kinda I'm just kinda thinking about that when I have that in mind. Can we extract stuff while we're on horseback? No. Yeah, that's probably a very interesting looking horse there, mate. What's a horse doing all the way out here? Sorry. I kind of want to run up to him. 
and just smack him in the face with my bionic arm, but we're gonna try and play this cool. Can I like shoot the lights out? That'll definitely alert everybody to my presence though. What is the best way to deal with this? I need this guy to like turn around. Ah, oh, we can throw magazines, right? So there you go. And then I just need to... Um... One of them's gone to sleep, which is actually really awesome. Okay. Just gonna keep him away from everybody else. So you go over here. Right, one dude being asleep makes this much easier. I wonder what happens when we turn off the music. Someone's gonna notice. Nobody notices. Okay, cool. And then we use the mortar on them. A portable toilet. Oh. If you're gonna hide inside, watch the enemy doesn't decide to use it. Same goes for hiding downed enemies in it. <laughs> Make sure they don't go to use the toilet. I love that. All right. Um, I need to get the ho I need to get my horse through this the checkpoint, or not. I can just kind of whistle it. It's breaking the immersion. I can just. Teleport my horse. Alright. Gotta keep some people alive at the guard post to, you know, reduce suspicion. Thank you. Alright. Oh shit! No. I fucked it. No. Okay. That's oh man, that is such a shame. Oh, they were literally just like walking. This guy's like a beacon. What's going on here? Miss being able to pat down my guys for, for ammo. Off the road. Get over there. That's so funny. I was like, oh, I've just been caught. And that is why we have reflex mode. Oh shit, hang on. Oh no, we're good. He's still stunned. Alright. Let's let now let's move on again. I did not expect characters. Enemies on the road. <laughs> and I probably should have. But there'd just be people just walking. On foot patrol. We're almost there though. Probably a whole bunch of flowers and shit I can gather. There's a truck. Holy shit, okay. Now this is where the recon begins, dude. Can't mark him? Am I just too far away? Wow, the directional microphone's great. Okay, this is gonna be, this is gonna be fucking interesting. I'm gonna mark as many people as we can going into this one. So we can make sure that we're being efficient. You've reached one day. 
They've got Miller locked up in that town. Check your eyes, Roy, for his location. I hope to hell he's all right. He's not your average client. That's potentially another... We saw one of those next to a dish before. Marker we'll park him, put a marker there. It's not the power, I don't think. It might be like taking out like communications. There you are. Cool. Marked. Right. Looks pretty good to me. Gotta mark the sheep, man. Oh, we actually can. <laughs> oh, that's the same truck that we marked before. Alright, midnight, baby. We've got the wolves. If only had a sniper, it'd be full sniper wolf. <laughs> what the fuck? Rude. Ran with an attitude. Alright. Let's see, that truck's out of here now. I'm gonna leave the horse here. Those dudes are just running, doing drills. We're gonna get that light source out of here, potentially. I am, I am immediately in love with this game. Like, based on just gameplay alone, this is absolutely incredible. I wish Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 could be like this. Those are the games that have, like... Obviously, there are veterans of those games that have played them forever. But, like, the controls in those games are, were incredibly hard for me to get used to. Um, just due to the... Due to the... Oh my god, what the hell just happened there? I didn't even realize that he just turned around. Oh my god. Damn it, man. That's it. That's it. That's that's carelessness. That's me not paying attention. I don't think they've seen me yet. They just were aware of the shot that was taken. Nah, that dude is looking right at me. Yeah. Damn it. I want to I want to stealth this. Ooh, wow. They flared me. I want to see what the combat is like, so we're going to do the combat and then I'm going to reset to do it in stealth. So much yelling. Chill out, guys. All right, let's 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 do this again, shall we? Let's do this again, but stealthy. I made that one mistake on that guard. Combat's fun, but this is a solo sneaking mission, Snake. Everything is purely OSP. You know where the target is. Head for one day. Yeah. Episode 1, Phantom Limbs. Dude, I could not even imagine... Ugh, people who don't have a limb and, like, be, like being able to feel it, like... Oops. Yeah. Being able to feel that would just be so... Yeah. Incredibly painful. I wanted to see if we could take this out before, that's why I investigated it. Right, let's do more intel than we did last time, shall we? Because there was a dude here that is now not here. The truck's gone, so that's good. There was also someone around here. That's tarragon, a type of medicinal plant. It contains trace amounts of a benzodiazepine derivative that's the active ingredient in pentazamine. Nice. Alright, we'll just hop on the big gun and make some noise. Alright, 
Now I want to get into the I want to get into the buildings because the buildings got. Was that noise just communicating that there was a soldier there? Did the game just help us out? I think so. We should probably be trying to take out, pacify as many as we can. That light's coming across. Right. Oh, Jesus. And he threw him the fuck down, that's for sure. Uh, you get up there. Alright, we're a little bit noisy. Let's, let's be careful. Yeah, the window stays smashed. <laughs> okay. Let's get the goodies. Oh my god. Please. It's easier to pick it up when we're in a panic. Are there anything in lockers? No. Just materials. Ooh. Can we take this out? There's no button to press to, like, take it out. So what if we remove their ability to... I don't know, maybe. I might not take the risk, considering the noise it'll make. I kind of wish that we could just open the window, but apparently it just smashes it. <laughs> So we just go out the way that we came in. Oh shit. Hang on. I'm gonna get him before he calls it in. He woke up. <laughs> That's why. I like, I'm not letting you call it in, buddy. Move him from the situation. Two dudes that way. There's a dude on the light here. I'll let that light go back over. That light's like focused. Over that way anyway, so we should be okay. Yeah, the light is right on us. Let's let it move. There we go, alright. I'm gonna get this guy off of the light. dude like right there and that lights like right in front of me nice this night vision is gonna actually I love that it just like is almost thermal in a way because it point it highlights items from what I can see with these flowers here um, and people all oh, this stuff in there too Cool. This does have a battery that I need to be aware of, though. So I need to use it sparingly. Oh, what? Oh. No. Thank you. Reflex, thank you. Damn it. That is a shame right there. Trying not to get caught, you know? It's kind of like the goal here. Alright. 
You can get in here. That's the building, boss. That's where they're holding Miller. Damn, all right, so we're like, we're here. Uh, he, I can hear him. Um. Oh, fuck. All right, hang on. I don't know if I'm... Just let me... Before we get this guy, before we get our boy... Just want to make sure that we're all good. this cable going to? Nowhere. I was like, what if it's a power cable? Okay, just one dude come up on the side. I figure that I'm going to have to be getting him out of here, so we're going to have to escape with him. So, the plan should be... Oh, his arm blocked it. Okay, the plan should be... To at least clear out a, a way that we can just leave here pretty easily. Alright. Alright. It's time. We made it in here. We got some music. We got some resources. Oh, dude. What the fuck? No leg and no arm as well. Holy shit. He lost limbs in that explosion too. That thing that Ocelot mentioned about, like, Kaz talking about the limb makes a little more sense now. He also probably needed to use it. God. Oh, fuck, man. Gaza, it's me. I'm here to get you out. Snake. Fuck his eye, man. Something to your eyes. No, it's it's just bright as all. Well. Here's your glasses, buddy. Epic zoom in. Kaz Miller. What took you so long. <laughs> Kept you it's waiting, huh? Here. Kept me waiting, huh? Wow. Dude, dude's missing limbs. Holy shit. Extraction <sighs> arrived at Metabase. Reunited, baby. Back together again. I'll send the chopper to get you out. I thought I was accidentally about to smack his head on the doorway. You can check the location on your iDroid. That's where we're headed? Alright. Mission info has been updated. I'm sure we could chuck him onto I'm sure we could chuck him onto the horse. He hasn't slowed you down one bit. <laughs> Not so heavy anymore, right? Boss, I've been waiting nine years to hear him. Kept you waiting, huh? <laughs> Save for old time's sake. Why aren't you saying it? You know where you're headed, boss? If you place a marker on the map, you can keep track of where you want to go even when the map's closed. Get to the RV with Miller. Yeah. 
Mew, super speed horse. This one's like, this time is actually coming to me. Rest in peace, Morpho, dude. Morpho, <laughs> our guy, our ground zeroes man. Rest in peace, Morpho. Alright, we're making it out. We're making it out. This is Pequot. Have arrived at LZ. We'll stand by. Support helicopter has arrived. Oh shit. Oh shit. I can hear radio communication. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh shit. A gas covering the land. Gas. What the fuck? Oh wow. It's them. What? Ooh. Boss, watch out. It's the skulls. the skulls. Don't let them find us. Boss, whatever that mist is, it's all around you. We can't see through it. I'm changing the RV so it's outside the mist. Get over there. The chopper will be waiting. Dude. These are like the frogs from MGS4, but like spooky. Like on steroids. What the hell? Um, we need to get... There? So we need to go. We need to go through them and then get down this way. Far out, okay. But we can't go outside the mission area. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Actually, I should mark them. Actually. Oh my god, what the hell is going on? Skulls. I think I gotta go through them no matter what. Because if I go down here... There's still two here. Unless they're slowly walking. Are they slowly walking? Not really. Okay. I don't know if we can stealth them. Oh, we can- Oh. We can hide. But not really. <laughs> I was like, we can hide. But then we also have Miller on the back, so I don't think that's going to work. They're going to find us. Yep. Yeah. Oh! What? What the fuck are those? The skulls are no joke. They can goddamn teleport. Sorry, Miller, you're getting shot. Holy shit. Oh my god! What is- what is going on? Boss, the target's dead. Mission failed. Time paradox, because Miller's dead. What the hell is going on, dude? I guess the skulls are affiliated with Skullface? That mist is, it's all around you. We can't see through it. I'm changing the RV so it's outside the mist. Get over there, the chopper will be waiting. <laughs> Yes, yes, no, yes. Can I can I go around? Ah, hey, uh, Skyrim awaits. 
No. Alright, we gotta go through them, which means we gotta trigger the thing and run away from them. Holy shit, man. Alright, maybe... Their, like, introductory cutscene just then was insane. Maybe... I don't think that they reacted. Oh my god, please. Ah, uh, he just saw me from there. Okay. Dude, look at these things! <laughs> they just pull guns out of their hands! Alright, let's move. Let's not try and fight them. Run. Drifting with my horse. Wow. Dude. What game am I playing? Oh my god. Goddamn supernatural Metal Gear shit. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Miller. I'm not very good at this one. Oh god. Don't get shot, Miller. Yep. I'll be there soon, I guess. Holy fuck. Alright, we're out of the mist, baby. Oh shit, the guard post. No one's there? Okay, we're good. The mist is cleared, and it looks like they're gone. Oh, thanks. That's the unit that attacked us before. They came at us real fast in the same kind of mist. Our men, survivors from nine years ago, were wiped out in minutes. I don't know what they want, but it's them. No mistake. Yeah. What the fuck? Dude, supernatural elements just like out the wazoo. That's awesome. Weird, but awesome. Um they do definitely remind me of the frogs, but uh a lot more hectic. Right. Imagine if we were going up against the skulls in Metal Gear Solid 4, we'd be fucked. Oh, it's the horse. Don't be rude to the horse, Pequod. Don't be rude to the horse. Okay. Wait, no, no. See, you were rude to the horse, and now it's being difficult. Alright. Let's get the hell on. Target secured, baby. We out. Goodbye, my horse. You served me well. D horse left missionary. Extraction arrived at mother base. Wow, what a goddamn mission, dude! B rank <laughs> for boss. Um, holy shit! That was so much fun. That was that was like that was just insane. That was, that was my favorite. Uh, that was that was awesome. I we got the code name chick again. <laughs> um, unless we're just gonna stay code name chick unless we get better results. Uh, that was episode one, Phantom Limbs, and honestly, I am so blown away with the gameplay so far, um, and what we're being presented with. I really hope you guys have enjoyed the the deep dive into everything that we've done so far, and I can't wait to keep it going and to see what craziness awaits in the in the next episode so big boss and cars have been reunited and i i can't wait for this reunion also to get some cars and ocelot interaction like what the hell is going on there um all to happen in the next episode so guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you then